I've got one more rosewood tug bar for you today. This is another Gaia Tone bass, or Guya Tone, for those who want to stick to the traditional pronunciation. Uh, we've already kind of gone over the history of this brand, so I'm not going to go too far into that today. What really caught my attention with this bass is that it looks like a jazz bass. It kind of looks like a miniature Fender jazz bass. Upon first glance, you see the, the bridge covers and the control plate and the pick guard and all of that. It's very jazz-esque, but the closer you look, the more things start to get a little weird. So this is another short scale bass. This is actually 30 inch short scale. One of the first things that struck me about this bass when I first picked it up was how narrow the neck is. We've got a one and a half inch nut width, just like a Fender Jazz bass. However, the string spacing at the bridge is just over 14 millimeters. Most Fender basses have a 19 millimeter spread at the bridge. So this thing is a toothpick. It, there's not much taper as the neck goes up. And it's a kind of cool feeling, but it definitely takes some getting used to playing, especially with the right hand. Another thing I've noticed is that the neck is pretty thick front to back, but I think that's also exaggerated by how narrow the neck is top to bottom. It feels like just kind of a big dowel rod in your hand. It's got a zero fret and something that I haven't seen yet, a metal nut. This looks to be polished steel of some sort. We've got this nice big recognizable chrome cover over the pickup here, which is a little bass humbucker style pickup. And then this is kind of a cool take on the uh, ashtray cover covering the bridge here. And there is this thumb screw here to easily pop this on and off. And if you wanted to, you could stick some foam underneath there for some muting. As we've seen before, another pretty hacked together bridge. Nonetheless, it intonates and there is plenty of room to adjust the action. Space features volume and tone controls, the rosewood tug bar, my favorite, a nice tortoiseshell pick guard, some sealed tuners that we've seen on these, a lot of these early Japanese bases before, that really cool Gaia Tone truss rod cover and water slide decal. And then this nice sort of badge shaped neck plate on the back with Made in Japan stamped in it. Cool three-tone sunburst finish. Not quite sure why they put the other strap button here. It could have easily gone on the end of the horn and lended the bass a little bit better balance. However, the body on this is really heavy. It must be some kind of plywood. So balance is not an issue even where that strap button is placed. The old dowel rod here is actually one piece of Rifson maple, which is kind of unusual for some of these bases. We've been seeing a lot of multi-laminate necks on these instruments. It's got a nice little volute there too, which is kind of interesting for a Fender style bolt-on neck. One other really cool feature about this bass that really drew me in is the case that it came in. Not quite sure if it's an original case. I kind of have a feeling that it is, but it's got this really cool kind of peach velvet lining in it. Such a cool color. The bass also came with the original sales sheet or certificate receipt, whatever you want to call this thing, that shows the model number on there, EB25, as well as I assume some of the specs. I've been studying Japanese for a while, so I should be able to read more of this than I currently can. I've been looking to see if I can find what year this bass was made. I'm gonna keep trying. But from my research, I would point this to the early to mid 70s. It's a nice little thumper. It has some vibe, it has some character. It's very well made. The Gaia Tone EB25, let's hear how it sounds.
Gaiatone EB25, the mini jazz bass that isn't really a jazz bass at all. See you next time.